guys, what's up? So last week, our local pinball enthusiast group here in Calgary held an information session at the Atlantic Trap and Guild Pub. Now they covered a few of the most important things you should look at when you're buying a used pinball machine, as well as some of the basics for cleaning and maintaining your machine once you get it home. Our hosts for the session are Alex Backer and Dan Horn, two good friends of mine who collectively bought, sold, and traded hundreds of pinball machines over the years, and they've picked up a pro tip or two along the way. So let's get right to it. Here's Alex and Dan. Well, perfect. First off, you know, we want to thank you guys for, uh, for coming here today um, to be here for, uh, for, for Pinball 101, where we're going to talk about uh, what to look for when purchasing your first machine or um, what to look for and watch out for uh, as a new pinball owner. So we really appreciate you coming here today. Um, my name is Alex Backer. I think uh, looking around, most of you know me uh, and uh, Dan Horn, yep. long, -term, long time collector here. And uh, yeah, yep. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get started here. I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about and, and learn real briefly with this small audience is how we all got into pinball. I know we're at a point right now where it seems like uh, pinball has uh, resurged and the the passion for pinball is is definitely there right now i know for me i started um, with a video game called devil's crush in the 10th grade um, on the turbografx 16 and i absolutely loved that game uh, which is uh you know it's an electronic version of a pinball <laughs> um, but uh, from there uh, i grew to absolutely love the uh, mechanical pinball and the clink and clank and uh, uh, a few years ago I was blessed with uh, finally having a place that could accommodate a pinball machine and that's how I started. I had found a pinball machine um, on, on Kijiji. Uh, I had no idea what they went for or anything uh, but, uh, but I bought it and uh, like so many people I became hooked. Um, I was fortunate with that machine because it was in good working condition. The first machine I owned was Firepower, which is a uh, machine from uh, 1980, which is from Williams. And uh, uh, that, that was a good working machine. It was also the first machine that uh, I, I lifted a play field under and um, replaced uh, incandescent bulbs with LED. And that was scary uh, going through it. And so um, the intent of this uh, class is to really bring uh, forth uh, some of the knowledge that we've learned um, in the years and sharing it forward um, with you guys so that you can make educated uh, decisions when uh, buying, maintaining, um, trading uh, your, your machines and how to keep them looking in as good condition as well as uh, repair and maintenance. <sighs> Yeah, my first game was uh, Bally Old Chicago. I guess it must be a lot older than you. So that's a 1970, I believe. And I bought, I think back then it wasn't, it wasn't uh, Kijiji. I can't remember where I bought it off of. Probably something similar to that. And first game I bought, bought it, took it home. And Jay, first meeting with Jay Richardson was that game because there's stuff on it not working and you don't know. You get it home, it's like, oh, geez, it doesn't count to 10 count. It's not, why isn't that score not moving? No get Jay in there and get him to fix some stuff and then I think after that I probably bought well everything else after that was pretty much new in a box for a while through Jay Richardson of course and uh, yeah I think after when I first got a game I didn't even pull the glass and now I have no problems I've been doing it for so long now that I have no problems I'll, I'll rip a play field out of a game I don't care but back then I was like oh geez you know don't even touch that like you know but now it's easy so Hopefully we'll get you guys up to at least not being afraid to pull the glass off, let the play field have a look, you know. Um, in terms of uh, context for today, we're going to be covering uh, uh, four major areas, okay? We're going to be covering the uh, exterior, uh, what to look for, uh, anything simple from um, removing a, a, a leg, uh, to uh, tightening a bolt back onto a leg. Uh, we'll be looking at um, what's behind the back box, uh, 
the importance of leveling a machine and how pitch changes speed. Um, we'll be looking at the top of, uh, of the play field and the underside of the play field. We'll also um, invite you guys that as you have questions, just feel free to ask. Um, and uh, of course, if we don't know, uh, we'll throw it back uh, to the audience to see what's happened um, in instances where people maybe do have a uh, better understanding or, uh, or we could definitely have an uh, open discussion of uh, what to do. Are there any questions so far? We're, and we're looking for about 90 minutes here, I think, is what we're going to, uh, going to take today. One of the um, first things we're looking at is uh, the exterior um, of, of the game and the cabinet. So if you were looking at potentially purchasing a machine, um, a used machine in particular, uh, you do want to view uh, from, from the outside in. So you would look at things like uh, the seams of the uh, cabinet, make sure that everything is uh, in, intact. Um, you would look at the overall uh, cosmetics of the game. Um, on a Williams um, in particular, you know, a, a used game here uh, has an additional uh, a lock bar feature that goes across the, uh, the, the cabinet um, uh, coin door, okay? Uh, so, you know, things to note is uh, uh, there will be holes behind these if you were to remove them and you'd want to keep the locks on. So not a deal breaker here, but you want to cosmetically view the game. Um, some things again to look out for is games that have been exposed to sunlight over time will have something called cab fade um, which is quite typical with a lot of the older machines from the 80s 90s um, on this machine I've actually noticed uh, so on the decal we'll actually see um, some 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 cab fade if we look at the gorilla here there is uh, a lot of orange in the eyes and in the mouth um, where if we go on this side, it's uh, more washed up. It's the same image, but this side has been exposed to... More sun fade, for yeah, sure. Yeah, more sun, yeah. yeah. Uh, another thing that we want to check is uh, back here. Um, you, you get a good indication of how much a machine has been moved by what this part looks like. So this, which we call the back of the machine, is actually the bottom of the machine, okay? So when we're moving a pinball machine, it actually sits vertically and wrapped, okay? And, and this quite often gets ratched. So this machine here, just looking at it, I'm going to say I don't think the cab's ever been touched up. I'm going to say I don't think that it's been moved too much in its life because be, because of the way the uh, the, uh, the the feet are still mostly intact throughout a Lost one four yeah. these are very very cheap pieces that you can buy at Home Depot something like that would never be a deal breaker um, with the cab though I did want to uh, show you guys a picture of what is a borderline deal breaker actually one of the fellas here today Jeff bought a um, what I would consider to be a, a Beautiful rendition of a Tales uh, from the Crypt, which is from Data East. Uh, I think it's 1993, if I remember. Uh, but uh, a beautiful machine. It doesn't have cab fade. The back box is uh, uh, the Translite, which is this, is in great condition. Uh, but, uh, but he bought it with, uh, with two things, two big things. One, uh, the game didn't power up. So when, when you turn it on, um, only the GI, which stands for General Illumination, which is all the outside lighting here, lit up and, and it, it was dead. And two, the reason why I'm mentioning this is it has what would be deemed as major cab damage. So I brought, I took a picture of it today because it's actually at my house, I'm working on it for him, of what the back legs look like. Before I show you guys, um, what happened was the, um, the uh, uh, leg uh, bolt a bracket which is one of these. So this is off of a modern Stern, but Data East and Sega use the same ones, okay? What happened was this was stripped at some point, so the bolt wouldn't hold, okay? And whoever owned the machine at the time was a do-it-yourself do person. Um, instead of, you know, maybe didn't realize that there's several pinball stores online, like uh, Marco's and, um, uh, 
uh, pinball so, life. Yeah, ministry, uh, pinball, pinball life, uh, Bay Area amusements. The list goes on and on. Didn't realize that this is an $8 American bracket. Um, could be put back on. These are inside the cabinet. I'll show you at another point when we're in there. Uh, but uh, in, instead of this, uh, the guy was probably a welder of sorts, and he went and welded a big L bracket with all Robertson screws up it to get the leg back on and he did it to both sides um, so if you look here right um, if you look here the damage to the cabinet is is horrendous you don't need to see this and um, and that in itself is a borderline um, deal breaker for somebody that would want it to sit nicely in their collection, right? Um, it's going to require, uh, obviously it's going to require new legs, it's going to require um, new, new uh, uh, leg brackets, and it's going to require uh, some body work to fix that. On top of that, this machine has definitely been moved once or twice with the legs on because you can't remove them like that. And, uh, and they've d further damaged um, the, the, uh, the uh, cabinet, which I don't believe would have ever been damaged before they did that hack. So um, the, the good thing with, with, uh, with Calgary is we've got uh, the Calgary Pinball Enthusiast Facebook page and website where um, you know, you'll be able to reach out to people like Dan and myself or, any, or many of us here actually belong to that, that, um, that you can reach out and ask, hey, where would I get this? What is this thing called? Somebody will, will know and somebody will be able to help you as well as uh, there's pin side with forums so you could do a, a scream out there online too and uh, very quickly you, you, you're able to, uh, somebody has had that problem and somebody knows how to fix that problem. Uh, so pin, pin side is also a good uh, resource. But uh, that's really an overview of the um, exterior of the cabinet in terms of things that I would look for when purchasing um, a machine. Uh, do, you, do you have anything to add with that, Dan? When I'm looking at a game, first thing I look at when I look at a game is the coin door. Coin door is going to tell you how much abuse it's had over its lifetime. If it's worn completely out, you know it was played heavily. That's usually the first thing you look at. That's um, a great point. Um, as soon as you pop open the coin door, if it's, you know, you get an idea right there how bad the condition of the coin door is if it's really dirty inside and stuff. Um, other than that, yeah, I always look at the edges and stuff on the cabinets. Um, we do know guys here that can restore cabinets. So if, it, if it's a game you totally love, it can be fixed and restored. Or you can buy new cabinets. They are available. That's a great point. Um, as we're looking at this, I, I, uh, I just noticed too that uh, this particular machine is uh, using these uh, plastic standoffs. Um, these ones are oversized to the, uh, to the leg and, and they're great for several things. Do they protect the machine itself? I'm not 100% positive because they're still against the, uh, the decal or, or the wood of the machine, but what they're fantastic for is these particular machines, these and uh, uh, the WPC machines and uh, the modern, uh, more modern uh, Stearns ha had uh, uh, decals with no, no protection. And what would happen is if a leg got loose from people shaking it, um, it would actually move the, the vinyl decal and uh, cause a lot of uh, issues. We see that with a bunch of games. Um, Fishtails, it's pretty common. This one, I know for sure it's on there because this used to be mine. Um, and, uh, and here we're seeing it's completely covered, right? Um, and then uh, they kind of evolved uh, the standoffs and in today's games, uh, all games that are purchased in a box come with standoffs and they look like this. They're actually uh, 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 screwed right into the cabinet. So these are free and they're screwed in and, and so the, uh, the legs themselves don't actually ever touch the bracket. They're brilliant. Um, they manufacture these. You can get these from just about anywhere. I do a lot of orders from uh, Marcos, um, but uh, they, they actually make the uh, legs stand off. And so you'll never wreck your decal um, with these, but they're pretty neat. And then there's sort of a interim one that's available too. If you wanted to, uh, to hide, um, to, to hide uh, uh, 
a, a standoff without actually going into your cabinet. So there's some, some other uh, ones like that that are available. In this case, they're on here because there's already some leg indents into the cabinet from legs being over tightened or loosened. So this way it, you don't see any of the marks and it's better. That's great. Um, the other thing that I uh, wanted to talk about with legs, and since we're still at the exterior, you know, we'll, we'll move on shortly, is um, uh, being careful not to over tighten a leg. It's, uh, it's easy to do. Um, it's, it's not rocket science. When you, when you tighten the, the 5 8 or the 9 16 bolt, depending on um, what era of pinball you, you have, which brand, um, once it's tight, just give it another one of these. It, 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 it's not like automotive where you have to clamp that valve right, uh, right, right down or uh, uh, a C-clamp or anything like that, right? So if you do end up uh, over tightening and, and you've stripped a screw or you've stripped the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the inside uh, bracket, it's not a deal breaker. Like I say, they're eight dollars. But uh, to get by, you would never keep it like that. You would just get a five eighths um, nut and uh, go on the inside and and just uh, tighten it like that. It's just not as easy to get off, right? You need to have two sockets and um, go. But uh, but that's certainly you wouldn't play it um, if you've over tightened it. You would uh, deal with that first. I think that's it for the the outside. Does anybody have any questions? Steve, do you have any questions? So what about a machine at home? Should I be keeping this covered or I do. just leave it out? I do, but I don't have 20 like he does or 30. I so just throw a blanket over to keep the dust off the glass. That's all. Yeah, that's a good point. So um, in my collection, um, I'm not susceptible to uh, sunlight coming in. So I d I'm not worried about uh, cab fade at all. Um, except upstairs, I do have one in the kitchen and, uh, and I do keep that covered um, with a blanket. They actually have full coverage pinball. You can get them on Amazon. They're quite expensive, $168. But you can get a full cover that actually goes over like the barbecue covers, right? Uh, kind of neat, a uh, little bit expensive. For the most part though, I think we all do put the blankets on the glass and that's simply for uh, dust purposes, right? You know, it's a pain in the butt to always be um, cleaning the glass if you don't have to, but dust uh, lands on the glass and you end up cleaning it, right? Especially if it's invisible glass, it's more of a pain to clean, so I just cover them. Um, that's a, that's a good point. One of the things we'll do when we have a, a, a glass back on is um, maybe touch on uh, some of the different um, glass cleaning products. Myself, for Invisiglass, you can't use Windex. Um, nothing uh, with ammonia. Nothing with ammonia in it, exactly. And um, uh, there's actually an incredibly uh, value for the dollar, an incredible way of uh, cleaning glass, and it's with 99% isopropyl alcohol. You can get a four pack of 250 for ten dollars at Costco, okay? And it's one to one ratio with distilled water. So uh, what I've done is I've gone to a Looney store. I've spent a couple of dollars on a brand new um, uh, sprayer and I, I, I'll put in a full part of uh, the 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol and then I'll just fill this with the distilled water and I'll put it in. Um, one to one ratio is fine. Once in a while I put in just a touch less water. I don't know why I do that. I always have so it would pr probably be more like a 55-45 but uh, with what you read one to one is uh, pretty much what everybody um, does. And, and this is amazing. I, um, I very rarely use regular glass cleaner. I, I swear by this. On a side note, if you clean your bathroom and you've got spots and everything, this works, works better than Windex as well. Yeah. Absolutely no streaks on that and it won't harm the film on the Invisiglass. So I'm cleaning the outside of the machine. Just uh, soap and water? Or well, is, I never don't use it. Use it. No, so... Um, What's interesting is uh, based on my experience, okay, um, from the different eras, uh, for instance, that fire there ha is a wood cabinet and it's got, uh, 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 it's screen printed and, and it dries out, okay? And I've had instances where I've had uh, drier but beautiful art on my, um, 
on my uh, uh, cabinets. And what I've used is uh, is uh, uh, like a, a wood moisturizer, believe it or not. Um, it, I have this orange stuff, and I, I left it at home, but it's, it's designed for... Um, for bringing back life with antiques with wood. Um, I have found it doesn't harm the outside of the cabinets at all and it does bring a lot of luster to the cabinet and I've been using it for years without any issue. Um, it's absolutely amazing. In terms of cleaning an outside of a cabinet, I do. If there's, if, if there's a marker or somebody's written on it, um, very, very uh, non-abrasive, you know, uh, soap and water uh, is, is just fine. Um, I also use a magic eraser uh, against, uh, there's, there's um, competing uh, ideas with magic eraser, but if you use it lightly and use it sparingly, it is magical on pinball, and I've used it for cabinets, um, for doors uh, without uh, issue, as well as, um, I'll just bring up another thing real quick because I'm thinking about this. A lot of time, uh, different routers would put uh, stickers here or stickers on their coin door, you know, 50 cents or insert coin token. You go to take those off and they're old. What a nightmare, it leaves a lot of uh, gunk and uh, Superstore, London Drugs, Canadian Tire sells something called Gugon. It's absolutely amazing. You spray it on, you leave it a couple of minutes, and you'll be able to get that uh, off without uh, uh, much issue. It's, it's fantastic. I don't really use that um, on, the, on the play field, but uh, I have from time to time for really stubborn marks, and it has uh, worked well as well. Two last things there. Opinions on types of glass and also opinions on powder coating pieces of the exterior. So for you guys, that's completely uh, subjective to what you like, right? We're at a point now where people are um, getting uh, a machine and being proud of a machine. And if you want to powder coat your rails or your door, your legs, your, uh, your, your shooter rod housing, um, go for it right uh, it's usually done by uh, automotive uh, places and and it's not expensive um, even if you don't know the people it's still typically about a couple hundred bucks uh, to, to, yeah, to not do even. Um, I, I myself I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to what it should look like in my how in my head when I think of a pinball machine I think of uh, a chrome or polished uh, metal um, and uh, if the machine comes out of the factory with a powder coating you know I'm all about that as well but myself and again it just boils down to preference um, if if you want to do it do it because not only is it a fun game but these are pieces of art within your house. They're a conversation piece. They're an extension of the pride that you have for the passion that you have within a, with within the uh, within the game of pinball, right? So I'm the opposite of him. I powder coat games. I brass them. I chrome them. Doesn't matter whatever the game is. My IJ has got all brass on it. Rails, hinges, lockdown bar, glass channel. Everything's brass. Legs. Um, then any new new game you buy these days, you can get a powder coated version of it. If you're buying an LE model, it's all powder coated. So yep. I usually don't touch them besides what they come stock if they're powder coated already. And, and to that point, um, the sky's the limit for what you want to invest in a game. If, if a fella does brass or chrome everything, it looks fantastic. It does look amazing. Um, and, uh, and Dan has some absolutely fine examples in the past and present of, uh, of games to just be absolutely proud of, right? This gun's a good point right there because I've even black nickeled the gun on my IJ. Yeah. Right? Cuz you know, the years of wear that were on it before, gone. So Now in terms of glass, uh, again that's a preference thing. Um, sharing my own personal experience, the glass that comes with a machine is uh, for the most part fine because it's uh, tempered glass. When you when you're talking about a, a a used machine though, especially one that's been on site, um, they're scratched. They're they're definitely scratched. And this is where you have some options. Okay, um, any any automotive glass place can order you tempered, uh, uh, reflective um, uh, pinball glass, and it is it, it it's totally fine. It'll run a guy fifty sixty dollars. It's not expensive. Okay, but there are other options. Um, for instance, Dan and I we truly believe in 
in uh, the Kleenex version of glass that is typically called Invisiglass. Why did I use Kleenex as a uh, as a uh, analogy? Because Kleenex were the first people that did tissues. And when you've got a runny nose, you say, oh, I've got to grab a Kleenex. You don't say, oh, I typically don't say I've got to grab a tissue, but we know Royale and so many other manufacturers make tissues, right? So Invisiglass is a company that makes Invisiglass, but there's others. There's Stern HD, um, there's uh, Roman PDI glass, there's, there's very many. Um, I have had the benefit of having all three in the same machine doing a comparison. So between Roman PDI, Invisiglass, and Stern HD, um, in a very, very bad reflecting machine. It's called Black One Water 100. It's from 1988. It was, uh, it was the first game that, uh, that Williams uh, fully built under the Bally name. Um, when they had purchased uh, Bally, okay, 1988. And um, anyways, a game with regular glass, because of the way the back glass is, y you can't see anything. So I had Stern HD, PDI, and, uh, and Invisiglass. And again, it's my bias here, but I would have to say if a guy is buying invisible glass, Roman PDI, hands down, in my humble opinion, is the best. They're all roughly the same amount of money, followed by Invisiglass, and then lastly, Stern HD. But if you talk about all three, are all three far better than the standard glass that you would buy brand new from an automotive shop? Yes, they're far better. So Stern HD is excellent, but Invisiglass is ever so slightly better, in my opinion. But that Roman PDI glass is just ever so much better than the, than, than, than the other two, right? All it is is for glare. If you don't like the glare, you can change the glass. If you're cheap and don't want to change the glass, buy a $10 DMD glare guard. It's just a little plastic deflector. You slap that on, you don't even notice it when you're playing, and it cuts down a reflection on the glass. Terribly, yeah, it reduces it quite a bit. Yeah, I, actually every game I own has it except for location games because they scratch easy. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, Never slide your glass out with your coin door open. Always close your coin door. There's a good hint for you. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Body-wise, I mean, do you attempt to do like repairing like the splinters and all that stuff? Is that something you do, or is that something you? Not do? if you want to keep the original art. Yeah. I leave it. Agreed. Agreed. I leave if if it's original. I just leave. You know, I got one at home that says on the side of it, hmm. and I just, okay. if, you know, it's back in the day it was there. I just I just leave it alone. So unless you're um, restoring it, then don't worry about it. Y'all might have remembered if you've been in here before, there was a fun house in here for about six months. It's actually mine. I have everything to do a full restore ground up on that from, from the legs to the uh, cabinet art, to the back glass, to a play field, to new ramps, etc. cetera. Um, in that instance, yes, I'm taking off all the cabinet decals. Uh, I am not going to attempt to uh, do the wood touch up myself. I have a friend by coincidence that that is a, a cabinet um, master whatever they're called anyways he makes cabinets for a living and uh, and he's going to touch it up for me and then I have another couple pals that promised me a long time ago that uh, that they would help get decals on I'm I looking think at Josh the filmer Brown right Chance now Johnson from yeah the, yeah. Arcade? P the Canadian Ar uh, Canadian Arcade, Canadian yeah. arcade. Yeah. yeah those two gentlemen are going to camera, going yeah. to help me yeah. to uh, to get those on those are a good group of guys and they've got a great uh, uh, great uh, YouTube uh, channel the Canadian arcade they're not cheap though <laughs> yeah yeah so they'll they'll be doing my decals uh, for me at uh, at some point yeah Always check the cord. You oh know, yeah, that's another that's thing to major. look at when you're buying I, it. I had wrote that down. So, games can act real funny, okay? Um, and one of the first things you want to look for, and what I looked for on your machine, okay, was unplugged it and made sure that the ground is on there. If the ground is missing, the, the, the game may um, act funny. It's designed to have that ground. Uh, cords are very cheap, and uh, the end of the plugs are also uh, very inexpensive. So if you need a new cord, that's fine. If you need a new end, that's fine. But if you don't have a ground, you need to have a ground on that game. Um, they miss that act. Uh, it, Especially the old electromechanical machines are just nuts without a without a ground plug. Yep. Um, so we're gonna. Uh, anybody else have any questions? Yeah.
a back to glass. Um, yeah. Where we purchased the Invisi glass from, and how much did it cost you? Yeah. So, uh, I pretty much um, for 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 my purchases. Um, I've purchased uh, the PDI Roman glass through uh, Nitro Pinball. So Tommy Floyd out of uh, Abbotsford. I know he's carrying a different glass that I haven't actually uh, purchased yet, uh, but uh, but I will. And I've heard it's quite good. I can't remember the name of it, uh, but if you look up Nitro Pinball, um, you can get uh, the invisible type glass there. Uh, Stern HD I purchased directly from Stern. I don't recommend that. I bought two sheets. I paid uh, 200 and. Uh, I believe they're 229 US, so you'd think that wasn't very bad. Uh, but uh, I got, uh, I had to pay um, duty and GST and shipping. And by the time I was done, it was over $700 for two sheets of glass to be here. Um, the, uh, the glass that Tommy's selling, if he's selling it on sale, is uh, $325. But if you have a machine that you're really um, excited about, Invisiglass is remarkable because you can literally, you think you're going to touch that play field. And, um, and I highly recommend it. I've got probably about uh, 10 sheets at home on, on my, you know, most um, precious games you'd call it, right? So. One more thing on that. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, you've got Invisiglass. I've got it on three games. Yeah. Uh, and Al Miller has stock. Uh, I think he's still got stock. I think he's sold out. From, from he's Tom. sold out. Sold out. Yeah. But he sometimes had uh, stock from Tommy and that to uh, buy it from Al locally. Every yeah. every egg pin show we have stock. Yeah. So, so this this uh, in April there will be stock back in Calgary, which is local, which is great. Or uh, yeah. 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 But it'll be brought down to Calgary yeah. as well after the right. show. Right. Right. Um, I think uh, we're going to move on to the back box, which is um, the. Uh, after you've walked the exterior, so as a potential uh, purchaser, and, and you're happy with what you're seeing, uh, the back box is probably one of the most uh, critical pieces as well. You know, I, I know I said one of the most, but uh, let's say it's basically um, just as, as critical, if not uh, more, because it can become very, um, very expensive. Here, let me move that. All right, you've got it. So, a couple things about this game right now. Uh, that isn't typical, all right? Right now, this has a color DMD inside uh, that is um, uh, displaying a monochrome color, the color green, um, and I think that's likely because uh, this game, I think, doesn't have color code, am I right? They haven't done color code for this game? Is that why this is green right now? Yeah, it's uh, that's a different, it's not an actual color DMD. Okay, so that's uh, so. What he's using here is he's using a uh, uh, a glass from a laptop, and uh, somehow we're getting this to work. Oh boy, that is totally different. Yeah. Wow, I've never seen anything. Uh, well, tell us what that is. <laughs> Gotta look it up. It's a DMD extender. That's what it is. So this is just a, uh, a what, a, f a 15 inch or a 17 inch, whatever like size? That. It's actually, you can actually, like you can buy it as a, as a kit As a too. kit? Yeah, it's kind of like buying a price? color DMD. This, these were actually out, I think, before the color DMDs were out. Okay. And you, you can set it to a color, right? Okay, oh neat. Yeah, so you can pick your color you want, in this case, green. So, so this fooled me um, when we were looking at it closed. I thought this was, uh, was uh, from colordmd.com uh, and, and basically they've got software for um, a ton of machines where they've gone and frame by frame painted uh, colors into the machine and then uh, uh, coded it for, for color. So um, I thought that's what this was but uh, this was a DMD replacement it sounds like in its time and it's, it's green. It's fine. Most DMDs are uh, you know uh, uh, smaller than this, uh, they, they they fit into the the the, be the speaker uh, bezel um, properly, uh, but uh, they, they the color DMDs look just like this. They're oversized, so they won't fit in every single machine. But um, there's LCD, which w is what this is, and then there's LED, uh, which are, is the native size, and um, and these are all LCDs that are in here. Every single one of them. Um, uh, yeah, so. The Walking Dead is uh, is um, 
is a uh, LED. So uh, I think no, that every single one in here is LCD. So you can make uh, the one difference when if you're looking at a color um, display for your uh, game and a color is available, there's really two choices out there from Color DMD. They're the game in town. Uh, there's the light emi uh, emitting diode, which is LED, and then uh, our display. And then there's uh, uh, the dot, uh, dot matrix or LCD. And with the LCDs, you can make a, uh, a flat HD-like look, which is what we have here on the LCD, both of these. Um, or, like what's on Walking Dead over there, you can make it look like a, uh, uh, a normal um, uh, DMD. With the LEDs, the benefit is you have perfect viewability from left to right because it's an LED. Um, each little dot is its own individual dot capable of displaying the colors, so it's perfect visibility. Um, the downfall to that is, is you can't make a painted picture like that. It'll always look like an LED. Now, again, it's a preference thing. I started with LCDs. I, I, I only have one LCD in my collection. That's for the Simpsons Pinball Party because I have it like a, uh, like a cartoon. Every other game, though, um, I personally prefer LED, um, but it's personal preference, and I know a lot of people love the LCD, love the idea of being able to have that solid color. Um, when we're back here, uh, if, if we're, we're looking at this now as a potential buyer, as a new buyer, um, there's a few things to note on, uh, on here, okay? This here is uh, called the CPU board. It's, it's the brains. It's also really important that you check the battery, okay? So, so this game here, he's actually got a remote battery pack on here, and the batteries are, are sitting down in the down in the box where if they were to corrode, you're not going to get the corrosion over the uh, CPU. Now, why is that a big deal? Because A, they, they corrode. We've, I guarantee you Dan has seen probably a hundred instances as of I. And, and when they corrode uh, and, and the acid leaks down, it creates nothing but problems. Absolutely nothing but problems. It's like a pure cancer for the board. You, you always end up typically replacing several parts. It works for six months and it fails again because it's just been eaten at. Okay, so that's a big deal. But Rotten Dog makes replacement uh, boards uh, they're they're not that much money i, I don't remember a couple, couple hundred usa dan 400 for that one for this one yeah is it 400 well, this one no this oh yeah, one, yeah 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 but uh but i mean um, the cpu a couple is hundred, a couple hundred right yeah Canadian. and that's a couple hundred dollar touch you have to keep in mind shipping and uh, exchange so 200 dollars us is really about 350 canadian by the time you're done or if not more with shipping um so there's uh a lot of us do uh, we put on remote battery holders super simple basically um, if you're un uncomfortable uh, soldering or anything like this you can buy something like what Dan has here which is somebody has made this they've got two battery type things at the two points that are most important and actually on this game I'm looking there's been corrosion on this battery pack in the past right but but he's lucky it never got onto the board okay but you can buy remote standoff battery packs like this what Stan had so we just plug this in it's down here is where the batteries are or for a couple of dollars at a place like B&E Electronics this is what I do I typically so this will house uh, three batteries or if it's a four battery pack you can put a diode in place with the with the ribbon pointing at the power basically what I do is I just take this I put velcro on this and I'll take it and I'll put it on the side like this and then I just tap into the board with it. so if you have soldering skills and you feel even quasi proficient this is something that somebody who's a quasi solderer could actually do quite easily you go to the two main points which is here and here um, either on the front you can take it or from the back I usually take it from the back and I just put this on like this and that way if there is uh, any um, problem uh, it's not going to damage the board there's no chance of it damaging the board and with the velcro it's easy to remove um, but uh, another rule of thumb is um, I, I just uh, always take a Christmas break and I replace all my batteries over Christmas break and if you do that 
I don't believe you're ever going to get corrosion if, if you use, uh, uh, you know, a, uh, a name brand uh, alkaline battery such as Duracell or Energizer. Yeah, Dan? Yeah. As long as you do it every year, you're fine. Yeah. This already came. It already had it on the game. The guy had already put it on there. So Another thing to, to look at and to see what kind of problems the game has had um, is the uh, driver board. And this here is a driver board. Now, Dan has a replacement driver board from Rotten Dog, which, yeah, will cost you 500 bucks landed by the time that you're, you're done, okay? I know this because I opened one four days ago. It was $494 after it got here, okay? Um, but I can tell you a story about what happened with his old board. One thing I can see that uh, the uh, general illumination uh, Molex has 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 been replaced at at least one point okay meaning it heated up it melted it malfunctioned something happened there so uh, a sturdier one's been put on um, as a uh, potential buyer you will want to look at these which are called tra uh, transistors and just see if you see any color variations because um, quite often uh, these will go what these do is they make ev all the coils work or things fire and um, and if there's a different one on it, you can say it's safe to th that there's been board work. The other thing you want to look for is any burns on the surface of the um, of the uh, driver board. Are there any burns? Because that's another giveaway that there's been an issue or there may be an issue. Okay. Um, is there anything else to add there, Dan? So. You're at the guy's house, you power it up, everything's fine. I just want to point out that when you get home and you go to power it up and it's a used game, my recommendation would be, before you start playing the heck out of it, um, to just uh, verify that all of your fuses are indeed the right fuses. Um, old routers are, were notorious for overfusing. If they were out of fuse, they would bump it up by one or two amps sometimes. And that can cause damage and does cause damage. In my experience, I will tell you, out of say 10 machines that I buy, when I actually check the fuses, out of those 10, at least three or four will have a wrong uh, uh, amperage fuse in there, whether it's lower or greater, but more often than not, it's greater. Or tin foil. Different things, you know, and, and that's a good point. Um, yeah, aside from there, uh, I mean, we've got, uh, uh, what, a soundboard on there, and, uh, uh, you know, you can see it's working. Um, on these, on, on this version of, uh, of uh, a driver board, it's awesome because it has LED lights for each of the fuses, letting us know that everything's working as it should. So eyeballing this with a modern board in it, this game looks good to go. It, uh, inspecting all the Molexes, which you would do, it looks awesome. Uh, no issues on the boards that I can see. And uh, I would be quite happy if I was a potential purchaser um, uh, for this. Now to talk about, uh, would it be a deal breaker if, if, if this was all corroded and, and it was a machine that you wanted and you know the cab is nice, the play field is nice, um, and, and you like the machine and the price is right, you need to factor in replacing that, but it's replaceable. And most things are repairable. So uh, keep, keep that in, in mind. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that corrosion all over this is a deal breaker, but again, could it be a deal breaker in a game like a Williams Contact from 1980 where the boards were actually, they kind of interfered with each other and they, 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 they had pins that the boards went right on top of each other and there's corrosion and it's going down two boards, that could be a deal breaker because that could get expensive. Um, and the game's not worth much. Yeah, yeah, and you have to factor that in, right? You know, what's the what's the worth of the game? Yeah, good point there, Dan. Does anybody have any questions with what's behind the back box? Is there a place to get fuses in Calgary? Yeah, so so there's three places that I will buy fuses from. Two are in Calgary, and the other is online. I prefer online, but uh, B and E Electronics. They're open till 4:30 every day, 8 to 4:30. Um, Monday through Friday, closed on the weekends, and they're just off of uh, Manhattan Road in the southeast there, off of 42nd Manhattan. Um, the other uh, place would be uh, Active uh, Components, um, and uh, oh, B&E, uh, I mean, um, what's the other one in the northeast by the airport MRO. there? MRO, thank you. MRO Electronics, so uh, any of those three are just fine. Um, myself, my personal preference, um, I 
pretty much buy all my electronic component replacement parts by a place called DigiKey. Uh, they have a US and Canadian presence with a warehouse in Winnipeg. So for instance, if today was Monday and it was before 11 o'clock our time and I needed a capacitor or I needed um, some fuses or, or pretty much any electronic component on this machine, okay? If I needed anything and I ordered it before 11 o'clock today, I'll tell you before you get home from work tomorrow, it's going to be at your door. It's incredible. And they have a flat $8 shipping fee. So if you need one transistor for 79 cents, doesn't make sense. Buy yourself a dozen because it's a flat shipping fee. But uh, they're remarkable. I've used them for years. I swear by them. But if I'm in a pinch and it's a weekday, I need something, of course, I'll go to B&E or any of the, uh, the other two there. Yep. There's also uh, uh, Mouser. Uh, electronics online as well uh, they're also good I just I, I, I created an account with DigiKey and uh, they're they're fantastic they've got a tremendous amount of uh, parts available um, typical replacement parts electronics related is there anything else on the back back box um, you know one of the things that I'll just quickly touch on is uh, uh, art the speakers in these machines are all they're all cheap um, but uh, pretty much everywhere will sell better speakers like speaker fidelity um, kits you can buy them pretty much from anywhere like pinball life marcos etc um, bay area amusements and uh, they'll uh, definitely add umph to the game so tommy uh, it, has them too nitro oh uh, yeah yep yep uh sorry uh nitro as well here in canada um where they're super awesome is things like in a DE game, Data East, they were stereo games, um, and uh, they, they typically, most Data East games had great soundtracks in my humble opinion, uh, and so they really shine in those machines. I'm a DE fan, you know, right Dan? Um, the other thing while we're in here is I want to point out um, something that uh, um, I'm surprised to uh, to see lacking in here. So there is a, we need to point it out. There is a, a back uh, box latch on, on the Williams games and on some other games, but they're not on all games, okay? That, uh, that if, if you disengage, we can put down the back box. Uh, but uh, to prevent that, especially on location, you don't want some kid mousing around hitting this and then boom, and it comes down smashing down. And, you know, chances are it, it might damage uh, your, your, your chrome or your metal. Um, there should be bolts in here in, in at least one of these, and I can see there's not. So if I go like Didn't this, if I'm, a, if I'm an eight-year-old kid coming from the uh, ice rink over there, and I'm like, hey, mommy, what's this? And I undo this. We can actually move this right now. That's not good, right? So there should be a bolt um, or two uh, in there. Are there any questions with the back box? Where are the back box keys supposed to be stored? Yeah, that's a great point. So, um, back box keys should not be stored with the coin door key. In my humble opinion, they should be put where they're meant to be put. There's a hook on every single... Oh, can you open this, Dad? On every single coin door, as far back as I've ever seen, um, there is always a hook that uh, that the key is supposed to be on and so Dan's key is where it is if you look at the hook it's right here it stays there everybody knows it's there don't put it on your key ring it's just not a good idea and I'll tell you why um, if you do need to drill into this at least you've got the back box one and you don't need to bother getting specialty um, bit uh, drivers to undo this and and get at it which you can totally do we had to do that in the case of jeff's um we were locked out of that so we just got the specialty bits or torque securities and uh, i think a t15 or something like that and uh had to go in and and get at it like that because somebody didn't put the key back not jeff but uh but somebody didn't put it back so so it was a, a bit of a pain in the butt to uh to deal with is there anything else there guys Playfield topside. Dan, did Yay. you want to take this one? Yeah, we'll go what to look You're for? You're doing good. We yeah. get, uh, maybe we get yeah. Scott on that one. Playfield topside. 
<laughs> um, yeah, Scott, if you want to chime in, for sure. We've got Scott Glauser here, and he has done a lot of play field swaps. Yes, uh, actual, and, swaps. Uh, actual swaps. Yeah, yes. play field swaps and uh, touch-ups. Uh, uh, but uh, with a play field, when you're looking at a play field, um, they, nothing would be a de uh, deal breaker in terms of the wear on the play field if you wanted that machine and you liked it and it played. Um, a deal breaker on a game would be if a ramp is simply missing and that ramp is not available, that is a deal breaker, okay? If, 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 if something major for the gameplay of the machine is missing, I would consider that a deal breaker if, 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 you've, if you've looked and you can't find it. It's typically a deal breaker. But um, in terms of uh, a play field, uh, visual inspection of the play field definitely should indicate sort of the amount of uh, wares and how the machine's been uh, maintained. Things to look for. Um, does everybody here know what play field planking is? OK, so um, play fields in time um, can dry, and the artwork, the paint, uh, can uh, get um, like uh, spider webs in it, okay? It's, it's called planking. And if we look at my diner over here, there's playfield planking on diner, but, uh, but not a deal breaker. So right here where it says extra ball, where we don't see the mylar, and you see all the lines in the paint, do you guys see that? Can you guys see that? That's planking. Now, if my game didn't have mylar over protecting the playfield, that whole playfield would be planked. And plank is usually a precursor to having paint come off of the playfield. All right? So I have some planking, but it's due to its age. Now, the way that I've been maintaining that is I've been keeping this waxed. Um, and with the wax, you have a protection, and it adds, obviously, it adds moisture and a protection barrier to the, to the game itself. So when you're visually inspecting a game, you can typically tell how the game's been taken care of by, is the game dirty? Is there a ton of dust, ball dust in here? Are there lines going like, like this right here is ball dust, what we're looking at? Okay, but that's totally removable. Um, a wax will completely remove that, right? That's but, a week, by the way. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, but but you want to look around your ball locks. Is there wear? Um, you want to look um, and, and just get a good idea of uh, the condition of the machine by how the play field looks. Typically, if you're going into some guy's house and he has a clean uh, play field and you look and the rubbers aren't cracked and they're not falling off and they're not rotting, um, it's usually a good indicator. That, that they've maintained that machine. And usually when you look in the back, you'll see that the back is good. You'll see the cabinets usually good and that's a good indication. On the flip side, I've been to people's houses that have no idea, lots, that the glass actually comes off. We've got rubber sitting on the play field, rubbers that have rotted. We've got rubber dust, we've got ball dust, we've got um, just crap everywhere, where um, or nowhere. And that also is not a deal breaker. Okay, because really, if you've got a game that the glass hasn't come off and, and it's filthy, that filth is quite often a great barrier for the wear. So in, in instances like that, you really want to be prepared uh, to invest some time in, in taking the top side of the play field apart and giving it a really good uh, clean. Cleaners that I use on play fields, um, so I pretty much, use four things for, for the play fields. So um, I use Simple, simple, uh, simple Green. It's, uh, it's really non-abrasive and it's uh, totally okay to use on the, yeah. Um, or this Ammonia is Free, Novus, this is, I got Novus. oh, you got Novus, okay. So um, I use Simple Green uh, and, uh, and it's great um, on the play field. Uh, the Novus cleaners, there's Novus one, two, three, four. Uh, I use those too. Uh, before I ran out of my um, Novus, um, uh, I was using that. And, and this is what's in here, but just take note, it's called uh, Novus. And it's not expensive, it's about uh, $11 to, uh, to, to get uh, like a Novus one. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll use this uh, to clean the play field. I'll also uh, use, um, 
Mr. Clean magic markers very sparingly. Uh, I don't really moisture them with water though. I'll use simple clean or, or Novus um, to get them wet and then, and then go. Water is a little bit bad on the play field because it's wood, but uh, again, as long as you dry it off, uh, theoretically you'd be okay, right? Um, so that's uh, that for the clean in the play field. Uh, this stuff here, um, the CP100, um, this stuff here is like magic too. Um, you can get this at various uh, places, Ministry of Pinball, Pinball Life. Uh, Pinball Life still carries this, right? Yeah. And uh, this is a liquid, but it's also a cleaner and a wax. This stuff is amazing. If, if you're having friends over and you want to give a quick clean because you want to impress them with your new machine, um, you can just put this stuff onto uh, your, your cleaning rag. You put it on, you give it a quick wipe, and then you take another clean microfiber uh, rag, and you just, uh, it'll haze, just like wax, and you give it a wipe down. This stuff is just, it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, absolutely a fantastic. Uh, the other thing that I use, though, um, I've used this since day one, uh, is the uh, Mother's uh, Carnuba Wax. Uh, it, it goes a long way. Like I've had this one at least two or three years and, um, and I still have a lot left in it. So it goes a tremendous uh, way. Um, the, the downfall to the hard wax is um, you gotta be careful when you're at things like star posts. Like you can see hard wax is used on this play field and you can see you can get it in the, the star posts and stuff. And that's just more cosmetic than being uh, co uh, conscientious of when you're cleaning it, right? Uh, but, uh, but basically I use these uh, cleaners in conjunction with a, a magic eraser. And um, typically when you get a machine home, the things that you're going to want to do to, to a machine is um, inspect the rubbers right away. If it's an older machine, go out and buy yourself a rubber kit um, for it and be prepared to, uh, to replace those. Also, we've got menus that we'll go through here um, when we get to uh, uh, under there. We can go through uh, menus and um, you can do things like turn on all the lights and replace any lights that are burnt out with incandescent bulbs if it's incandescent or LED if they're LED. Are there any questions with the with the play field yet? Yeah. How much time do you think you would average spend on an average per machine? So that definitely depends on the complexity of the machine. I'll put it into perspective. I've, I recently bought a well uh, well used total nuclear annihilation, and uh, it was in, it was black and in bad shape. Um, it had a uh, it had a uh, uh, flipper bushing uh, broken up here on a recent rebuild okay um the uh the the flippers down here the bushings were absolutely rotted one side was rebuilt one side was not okay so the flippers were were weak and not the same um the rubbers uh were competition rubbers but they were worn completely out okay and the game itself was black it was black under the plastics it was black on the play field it was absolutely atrocious that is a simple game to shop i started that on a saturday morning and i was done by saturday evening i had the complete play field um, removed i cleaned every single piece i did three flipper rebuilds replaced three bushings put it all back together have it playing like absolute brand new like it just came out of the box right that was an all-day job for me to do that it probably because of how anal I am you can ask Dan um, it took me a good uh, non-stop I spent about uh, um, eight or ten hours on it I really did um, now a game like this it has more complexity to it something like a ramp uh, uh, railings all this stuff that uh, total nuclear annihilation doesn't do um, I would say if if this was a dirty machine um, it's Easily, if you want to get it looking like new and you really want to, you know, have it playing like new and you have to tweak things and uh, adjust um, switches and things like that, I typically do believe that I spend a good 15 hours on a game like this. Other people will look and say, you're ridiculous, I can do it in five. You can do it in five. It's just... I'm really anal when it comes to doing it. So anywhere between, I would say, uh, five hours and about 15. What would you say, Dan, Every about day. the same? A day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it really, um, and, and it depends on your skill set. And the other thing you'll find is you get better at things as you um, uh, do them more and more. You get more comfortable um, with, uh, with, with them. Um, uh, you know, while we're here, um, yeah, are there any other questions about, uh, yeah? When you're taking all the ramps and everything off, 
take pictures. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, uh, good point. Uh, so there's uh, two things you want to do. Um, you need a magnetic tray, absolutely you need a magnetic tray, okay? Go to Princess Auto, buy a three pack, they're like seven bucks, all right? Those are your best friends, they have rubber on the bottom uh, because all the screws that you're gonna get from a sec uh, certain area, you're gonna put in that one tray. So whether it's posts or anything, as well as the ton of pictures, okay? So you do, if, if we were to take apart this area, just say I've taken this off, I've got all these bits in a, in a tray right now, I would just take this with the tray and I would dump it over here. I've got tray number two. Now I'm gonna attack this area and when I take out those screws and whatnot and I've taken pictures, I'm going to put those pieces into tray number two and so forth, right? Um, another thing, there's no science to it, but I never just shop a machine. So I will either start based on the machine and the complexity, either at the very top and move systematically down or I will start at the very bottom okay so at the skirt and move systematically up i do not go here and then here it gets confusing and, it, and it, it, you don't want to do that but it, at least the way that i've done it anything else sir dad do you have anything steve anybody uh, why the pictures is that just for before and after no well it's cool for before and after and it's great to show people before and after because their mouth will drop i've seen it lots uh, but it's actually because you've got two, three bolts, you've got two, three different size of the uh, hex posts, and you're like, oh my God, which one's where? And because of the pictures, you're able to say, okay, this one goes here, this one goes here. You see, here's an example. These are two different sizes of, of hex posts, all right? And, and, and it, if you had more of this on this game, here, 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 the pictures come in very handy. You go, oh, hey, this one on the left is smaller than this one on the right, or vice versa. Therefore, I'm 80% positive it's this one, <laughs> right? And, and when you start putting something back together and you got it wrong, oh, it is, uh, it's frustrating when you've got to go back down and you go, oh my God, I forgot to put that part on. And it's a critical piece. You got to go right back down and do it. And uh, so that's why the pictures are good and, um, and, and putting portions of the, the play field aside together. Other stuff you had on our list here. So, ghosting. What is that? Yeah. Uh, so, ghosting is something that we see when um, the clear coat has lifted uh, from a um, an insert. Um, but any of these games have ghosting? Oh, Spider-Man. Maybe Spider-Man. Maybe Spider-Man because it's a modern stern may have ghosting. Uh, what that is is it's literally it just looks like a piece of fog. Um, uh, in the insert, uh, and it's uh, I, I, it's not really repairable. Um, I don't think. Somebody correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. You just live with it. But uh, uh, ghosting happens. How about this here when it flickers? Is there any way to fix that? Or, oh, or that that that's a version of ghosting. So that's from yeah, that's uh, that's not the same as uh, the 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 ghosting um, insert ghostings that you see when the clear coat uh, separates. But uh, but what this is is um, the uh, the LEDs are really sensitive to uh, to voltage, that's and um, pardon me. That's power saver mode. You can turn that off. Oh yeah, perfect. So. There you go. After 15 minutes, it, it drops to a power saver mode on here. You can actually adjust that time. And that's what we were seeing there. But with the, L, with the LEDs, it's a prime example of some games actually, uh, the lighting breathes in and out, especially the old Capcom games. And, um, and LEDs can be really challenging to get to those levels. Right here, we're seeing the, you're seeing the different, um, ghosting uh, uh, by, by, by breathing right now it's, it's flickering instead of smooth uh, going in and out really smooth uh, LEDs have gotten way better uh, actually Scott Glauser carries uh, um, LEDs and I would recommend anybody that's looking to LED a game go through Scott um, Jeff remember I said tales from the crypt uh, the bulbs are a buck a piece um, I buy all my bulbs from from Scott your game will be completely out of, outfitted with Scott's bulbs. They're excellent. They're in this game. Uh, they're in my game. They're in this game. Uh, they're they're in Whirlwind. Uh, they're probably some in here, right? Yeah, so fire, so okay. And there's they're in fire as yeah. well. So you can see that uh, they're they're excellent. And we're all collectors here, all of us. And um, and they're great. You, you can't beat it for a buck because you're looking at um, more than a dollar U.S. per bulb, anyways. When you get into a two LED. Um, 
uh, uh, bulb normally online plus shipping. So it just makes sense to buy local and Scott has boatloads. So no matter what you need in any color, whether you want a soft white, a cool white, um, a clear dome or a frosted dome, um, he'll, he'll have them for you. So uh, everybody should actually grab Scott's information if you don't already have it. Um, if that's something that you're looking to purchase, just buy your lights locally. You can't go wrong. Uh, you absolutely can't go wrong. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. So when we talk about uh, the the well, when we talk about like how much a game has been used, shooter lane is a pretty good indicator um, by the wear that you see right here. So there's a cliffy here protecting this portion, but um, but people show that because when a game has like virtually no plays and home use only, that portion just it takes forever to wear down. But if a, if a game is is used lots, it's been on location, um, you get a real good indicator. I wish we had Monster Bash still here because you'd have a really good indicator of of, of a game that's been played over and over. But Yeah, so actually if we come over here, um, this game, you can actually see it. It has been played a, a, a boatload, get it? Fishtails boatload. Um, and we can see here uh, things that, uh, to be cognizant of, this particular game has um, uh, problems with the inserts. So the inserts have raised um, and uh, uh, you can see where on the play field at the inserts, okay? You can see just from inspecting the game briefly that there's wear on the boat as well, which is uh, a second uh, brief play field here. Um, you can see wear on a decal. So you can figure that this has been played a lot. And, and another way to look at that is to look here at the um, shooter lane we can see there's wear on both sides of the wood there's dirt if you guys come see that um, and uh, this game is a good candidate for a playfield swap uh, because the cabinet is in great shape okay the back glass is in great shape the topper is in working condition they make reproduction playfields for this and this is a game that people like and people want so if you're going to keep this in your collection, awesome. It's a great game. It's a play field swap contender. Um, if you're going to sell it, it has really good resale appeal value. And uh, a play field swap would just make this game absolutely spike in its worth. As a matter of fact, Scott really loves this game. And he has everything to do a full restore on this. So this game will be fully restored at, at some point because he's sharing it here at the trap so people can play right now. But this is going to end up in his collection um, as a collector's quality uh, game at some point. But right now, because it's a great game, it's fun, people enjoy it, it's here for people to, to play and enjoy. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Mylar, a lot of games come with, uh, with factory Mylar. Uh, it was an option back in the System 11s, I believe it was an option. It would protect the play field. Um, the diner, which you guys all saw, has mylar in the majority of the play field, which has protected the play field. But if you remember, I showed you where there was planking on the play field, where there wasn't mylar. So mylar protects the play field. Um, there's certain places too where you might want to add mylar, and you can buy mylar by the, by the inch, by the foot, um, at places like Marco's. I normally have a big roll of mylar that I can't find. I've recently used it on two machines. I have no idea what I did. But this was one piece cut left that I did find. I really hope my other half didn't accidentally throw it out. I'm praying she didn't. But, uh, but what mylar is, is it almost looks like a tape, but it's, uh, it's very protective. And, and you can put this in any high wear spots and, and you could, could cut it to shape. There's also mylar you can buy for games that you could put over, but you have to be really careful because if you put it on wrong, you go to bring it up, you'll rip art off quite often. But a game like, um, like this, if, if it didn't have a cliffy protector and he did want to protect this ever so slightly, um, you could put a piece of mylar in the shooter lane, uh, definitely right, right where the ball uh, exit is of the, of the play field. Um, these tend to typically wear. Uh, my recommendation on any new machine, especially, especially a new stern, would be to take a piece of mylar about this size and you put it in the shooter lane, right? Uh, I mean the, um, 
uh, the ball uh, exit of the play field and you put that on because that's going to protect uh, clear uh, clear coat coming off it's going to protect the wear I don't know what's with the wood they just don't seem as solid anymore I, I, I've heard that the clear coat they use is more um, friendly than it used to be but a downfall is it's slightly softer I have no idea if that's true but uh, it does appear to be the case because I do notice that the newer games Ghostbusters and after from Stern tend to uh, tend to be more susceptible to uh, to wear yeah what, uh, so moving mylar you have a little piece you wanted to take off yeah so there's there's really two ways to remove mylar and that's with um, that's with uh, ice like a can upside freeze down spray. freeze spraying it yeah or um, uh, so an air can upside down or uh, I have only ever used heat so I use a heat gun so I make sure that any plastics with, which are in the area are removed and I uh, only use free spray pardon me I only use free spray because you don't want to hit the insert you hit the inserts or whatever too and much. yeah and they're or they're, the paint they're both good so I've I've had a lot of success my thing is is don't remove the mylar because you're going to take off paint likely um, if you don't need to remove it don't remove it um, it's a, it's a pain in the ass but uh, but Dan's removed it with freeze and you've had good success right yeah yeah and then at like you say it depends on the game if it's a really old game you yeah it's better off to just leave it anyway yeah 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 are there any other things with the mylar just, I've got a bit that's uh, come up a little bit so there's dust underneath it so yeah I it off and just then put it it. yeah so what I did okay. okay so if we come over here all right and we look at uh, diner okay <laughs> So I so do you see where it says spot and food? Yeah. Do you see the food? So I had mylar and dirt from the red post all around to under the ramp and you couldn't even read the spot because it was dirt. So what I did was I carefully removed the mylar to the O of the second O of food. Okay, you can see where I've put a new piece of mylar there, mm -hmm. right? So I carefully removed the mylar that was there. I lined it up with the post and I put it as incognito as could be. I didn't remove the, all the mylar right. off the play field to do that. Sure. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I didn't want that dirt there either. So yeah. that's what I that's what I did. You just need to be careful. Yeah. Um, another thing uh, is cliffies. So these right here are uh, cliffy rollover protectors. And this game was in pretty good shape overall for 1990. But there was wear at the rollovers where the balls drop out of uh, the two um, ramps. And uh, so what I did was I bought from Passion for Pinball. Um, pa yeah, Passion, Passion for, for Pinball. pinball. Uh, from Cliff, where his cliffy rollover protectors for here. He makes protectors for virtually everything um, and every game. So you can buy ones that will they'll cover damage and they'll uh, also uh, protect from damage. And there's nothing wrong with putting cliffies on a brand new machine. Um, if you ask me if I do it, if it's a brand new machine of mine and it's staying in my house, I wouldn't dream of it. But that's because I play less than five games a week probably on that particular machine. Probably I play eight or ten games a month doesn't need it so I won't bother putting it on if it's a game that's going to be here or on location or it's a game that has wear and you want to cover it Cliffy's are a must they're top-notch he's a great guy um, and uh, and like I say he's got ones for virtually everything I brought a Cliffy specific uh, Cliffy to show today and it's for Lord of the Rings and it's for an area that does wear um, and uh, this is a Lord of the Rings Cliffy so it's game specific and uh, it, it's got uh, stickers on, on both sides here that you would peel off. You would use uh, isopropyl alcohol um, before applying it and you'd put it on. And here I can see it's held in place by two posts as well as by the 3M uh, sticker that's on the, on the back. But it's great for covering damage. So under here. There, there's damage under here on this play field and I can feel that because I'm taking my finger and I can I can feel the wood is uh, a little bit uh, I don't know the word toothed up or something but the cliffy covers it beautifully and it just gives a beautiful look to this game and overall this game can be considered in excellent shape because the cliffies are protecting that and have completely covered the damage so that that would not be a deal breaker that'd be a deal maker somebody that cares about this machine 
wanted to protect that from further being damaged and have tastefully put these on and, and protected it. So if I was looking at this machine to buy, I'd feel very comfortable right now with looking at this, looking at the cab and looking at the play field. We haven't looked underneath so far, but I would be like, yeah, this is, this is a well taken care of, well looked after machine. Uh, in terms of um, uh, pinballs, pinballs get pits um, and uh, they're really responsible for a lot of the wear that you do see on a playfield. Pinballs are cheap, you can buy steel or chrome. Um, as soon as I bought the game, I put new balls in. Any, I, new, any new stern I buy, I leave them in the package and don't even use them. I buy different balls. Every single, buy game, bulk. Every single game that I own, players or not, gets Shit. brand new balls immediately. Um, balls are cheap. Okay, uh, but basically um, there's chrome balls and there's steel balls or carbon uh, steel balls. Um, one is uh, less susceptible to uh, magnets than the other. So if you want the shiniest, nicest uh, balls, you get uh, chrome balls. But the problem with chrome balls is they're, uh, they're, they're super shiny, they're beautiful. But if you've got magnets in the game, they will magnetize sooner than a, a, a steel carbon ball. Uh, both take a while to magnetize, but chrome, you're pretty much good for magnetizing at some point, which then can cause trouble in troughs and optos with the balls sticking together and getting confused and you think your game's broken. It's just your balls are magnetized. You can ask Scott and I how often in the past we had to troubleshoot something like that and it was the balls. Absolutely crazy, okay? Um, and uh, so, the benefit to carbon steel balls is uh, they're less likely to magnetize, but uh, the downfall is they're not beautifully shiny. So depending on the game will dictate which one you go with, and they're virtually about the same weight. One I think is like 2.8 ounces, the other one's uh, 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 2.9, so it's basically the same difference. Um, but uh, for, for the price of balls, you buy new balls. The problem that I have found lately is um, I was buying balls from um, Amazon, which was great. You could get like 100 for pretty much, um, I think about, uh, about $100 Canadian landed, which is awesome. Uh, but uh, they've been out of stock for a long time and I've been forced to uh, order again from other places uh, like Pinball Life and Marcos. And you, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit more money, but uh, my recommendation would be, um, to change them as soon as you get the game. As soon as you've, as soon as you've cleaned your game, waxed it, it's ready to go. Because there's no sense putting in the balls into a dirty machine. Just leave them out until you're done cleaning, waxing, it's ready to go, and then put in your new balls, call it a day. Should someone be taking the balls out before you put it up? Yeah, so, so there's, uh, there's several different methods. Um, I always take out the balls. Did you take out the balls? I already took out the balls. Yeah. So, I, I usually always take out the balls, but if I'm being ultra lazy, just shove uh, shove your uh, your rag uh, into the shooter lane, and you'll, uh, the balls won't come out. Uh, but for most games, they have a trough and a, um, a vertical up kick, like this one, which moves quite easily, right? And with the game down, you just go flick, 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 or you can go into the menu and go ball eject. But uh, I don't bother doing that. Oh, uh, yeah, so on, so on some games they can come out that, and that, that's atrocious because when the ball falls, you're susceptible to breaking plastics, breaking plastic ramps. Some of these things you can't get, a lot of them you can, but some games specific you can't. How are we doing for time here? We're okay, right? One o'clock, perfect. So this is the underside of, uh, of uh, a playfield cabinet, and um, a couple of things to note. Okay, most games have a power um, utility plug in them. This one is one as well. Uh, if you look at this, so this is a good example of you looking at this and you can't use it as such right now, but anywhere including B&E make a little six inch adapter that you can plug into this and then have a power plug, a normal power plug. The reason why they put this on this machine is because internationally there's different plugs. So this right now you can't use, but it's a $4 piece that they'll give you a power plug on it and then you can uh, use that for things like uh, soldering iron, right? Of course, uh, it doesn't work if the game's unplugged, so. Just on WPC 95s. Which, the odd plug? Yeah, oh yeah, plug. yeah, yeah, most, most have a normal um, 110 uh, plug, but on the 95s they were like this and, uh, and you could just buy that, uh, buy that part. Yeah. yeah, yeah, quite often. Uh, again, though, you can just buy that from B&E, like they carry it, yep. Um, so under here, we've got a speaker. We've got uh, this here. Have you guys seen one of these? 
This will actually put the play field um, up a portion and it lands on uh, right here, right? So if we were if we were doing work where we had to, uh, pardon my reach here, you got that, Dan? We can go like this. Gives us the ability to, uh, to, 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 to work back and forth, right? Um, under the play field as a new owner, so say, say based on everything, you looked at this, you liked what you saw, it's clean under here, it's good to go. Uh, there's some, some things to talk about under the play field and, and uh, what, what, to, uh, what to do here. Um, so if we start down here, there's a, there's a tilt bob and, and that uh, sets the sensitivity for how much you can push the machine. Um, if it's uh, home use, I usually have my tilt bob turned quite far down. In, in a bar though, um, I'll have it turned more up. But basically what this bob does, it's adjustable from underneath. What this bob does is when, when the bob touches the metal, it'll give you a tilt warning. And games can be set to one, two, or three warnings. So the other problem is a player like me that plays in the league, I tilt out a lot, but I'm, not, I'm never rough on the machine right i tilt because i do this so often and you can see what happens the game starts swinging and the next thing you know i'm t I've, I, I, I've tilted out especially on multi-ball all these guys laugh here in the background here but uh but i, I do that quite often um anyhow so that's a tilt bob right there you can adjust that when you go home things under the play field though to look for that you'll see is uh coil dust which is basically not really much on this game. So I'm fairly certain this game hadn't been played too much uh, because of the condition of the cab, the condition of the play field, the condition in the back box, the care that's taken. It looks like to me that it spent most of its life uh, probably with a collector as opposed to on site, okay? Um, and one thing we can see is that uh, these are the original coils, but there's not a lot of coil dust. Um, and uh, uh, so overall, this is uh, in really, really good shape. You look at the Optos uh, 10 or 16 board, whichever this is, um, and you just look at it overall, it's in good shape. Another indicator that somebody's taking care of this game is uh, these are not what would have come factory, these, um, these uh, uh, wedge, uh, in light wedge inserts. Uh, these, are, these have been replaced. So somebody took the time to replace them for one reason or another. Uh, but they've been replaced. The factory ones are always black like this. Um, so I'm looking under here. This looks great. You know, I'm going to say these coils on the flippers have been redone. Uh, you know, you're looking here. You want to make sure that these are all sturdy and, and, and well in place. Overall, this game looks really good down here. Uh, but uh, as a new owner, if I took it home, a few things I would do right away is um, flipper rebuilds are cheap and they're one of the best ways to get the most out of your game pretty much immediately, right? Uh, so somebody like Scott or myself or Dan, we, we'll always do a flipper rebuild on our machines pretty much as soon as we get them. We'll replace the bushing, which is a plastic piece that goes between the flipper and the uh, flipper mech down here. Um, and uh, these are a couple of various uh, flipper rebuild kits that I have. Um, and uh, so you can see a flipper pawl in here and um, uh, uh, end of stroke uh, le uh, leaf switch. Um, we've got, uh, we've got um, uh, uh, flipper uh, sleeve bushings here, right? We've got, um, this one has some springs. We've got the... Uh, Coil stock. Thank you. <laughs> lost me. We've got uh, brand new coil stops in here, and these wear down. These wear down quite a bit. So, they, yeah, they mushroom, and they really affect how far a, um, a flipper can uh, extend and how uh, good a flipper can be. Um, I remember watching a Canadian arcade uh, video, one of the first ones that uh, my friend Josh uh, did, and he had a Bullwinkles that had... Uh, uh, crappy flipper um, responses to Data East Bullwinkles, and he went and changed um, the uh, the flipper stops. I think uh, I can't remember what else he did, but I particularly remember that those were a game changer in terms of how his game played. So flipper rebuild kits are cheap, um, thirty some dollars U.S. typically. 
uh, and, um, and, and they're one of the best investments. So when you're buying a machine and you've got it home and you're all happy now and, and, and you want to take on something that you feel comfortable doing, you should look at, uh, look at replacing the rubbers right away. Consider doing a flipper rebuild kit right away. If, you, if, if the components don't look like they're brand spanking new and the guy didn't say, I did a flipper rebuild kit last month, then I would definitely consider that and definitely consider uh, new balls and making sure that all the lights work. Is there anything else here that you'd say uh, that you do right a away? Brand new stern. Um, talk about flipper rebuilds. Coil stops on brand new sterns, they're engineered very badly. So if I bought a brand new stern, what I generally do is I'll play it for maybe a hundred plays, but then I swap out the coil stops because they have a little bit of brass in there, they wear out. Yeah, right and if you see yes. any brass shavings in the bottom of your brand new stern, yeah. change your coil stops because they're going to get yeah. loose and you're going to ruin your coil max. So. Yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. Again, um, on Game of Thrones when I had it here. Yeah. 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 I had to replace them. Um, so if, if I was buying this uh, machine, um, a couple of things I'd hit the guy up for that I notice is um, if, if I was looking at buying this and I wanted a better deal. I would probably go on about it. him missing a coin mech here, okay? I would ask him about uh, about this, right? Um, I would another thing that you can look at really for for, for for play, and you can usually feel is um, a shooter rod if 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 it's uh, not been replaced or or if the rubber's been off a long time. This portion here will mushroom a little bit. I would just look at that if you were trying to get uh, any signs of indication of. Um, it not being uh, maintained, but overall, I can tell this machine's been well well maintained. I'd feel very comfortable purchasing this one that we've gone over today. Sold again. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, things in here that aren't deal breakers. Obviously, if it comes with a coin box, great. If it doesn't, so what? Um, other things to look for. A lot of modern games will have shakers in them. So you'll see a shaker that's great. That's a hundred dollar touch, um, hundred US dollar What's touch. A shaker? a shaker makes the game vibrate. So if we were to Certain play modes, total nuclear annihilation right now, it, it, you know, Spider Man might have uh, a Spider Man may have a shaker. Uh, Walking, Walking Dead. Dead may have a shaker in it too. Yeah, uh, they're they're great. They just add another dimension to uh, to your gameplay. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yes, but um, to that point, any game that uh, takes a shaker, with the exception of the original Lord of the Rings that wasn't designed for a shaker, but you can backdoor a shaker, um, uh, the, the, the code's built in. So it's just a matter of going into the menu and turning it on. Yeah, or, or the 2003 just with a PAL chip. So what I did, for instance, uh, uh, Gary has um, my 2003 Lord of the Rings, and um, and I went and uh, I I went and bought a PAL chip, which is a special chip to fool the board that's in it to think it's a White Star modified board, which came out for the for it, it was a it was a SAM board that came out, which was really a White Star mod modified. Don't mean to get into too much detail here, but by replacing a chip on one board, I was able to fool the game into thinking it's an LE which then enabled me to upgrade the software to the LE version, which then enabled me to put in the shaker. So a game that was never designed to have a shaker because it was re-released uh, with a shaker in 09, we are now able to take advantage. Uh, Stern doesn't like you doing that, but uh, I didn't care. It had a shaker in it, it's fantastic. But for the most part, any game that has a shaker, for, with the exception of Lord of the Rings, has a shaker programming uh, built in. Yeah, Gary. One more thing on the shaker motors and that. Uh, my Star Trek and my Metallica, I've had uh, my flippers just go dead on me. And uh, an easy fix where the only problem I've had is going in on the optos, on the Molexes for the optos, and that, and just push on them and they work the anyway. I think it's from the shaking. That, yeah, uh, sure. So it's rattled yeah, loose. So like he's used it mods. And, and yeah. It just loosens it enough. Like I don't feel it really move, but you just press on the optos uh, down at That's your. Uh, like the Molex, you mean? On, yeah, on your uh, trough tray there. Oh. And that, you just push on them, 
and uh, the flippers work began. Well, that's really wrong. It's really weird. We should look at that in greater detail one of these days, I think, maybe. I'm yeah, wondering. Well, yeah. Monster, they will get loose if you just touch them. Oh, and then it tightens. Yeah. yeah. yeah you nice. Push on it. And if, you, if it continues, it, it'll either be a cold solder, which you need to take boards sure. off and just reflow the solder on those two little opto boards. Yeah. But common problem on those stern opto boards Troughs? are just terrible. They're only $30 part. Yeah. So they're not really built well. Mm hmm. Mm hmm see that. Um, Did you touch on the danger of doing any work on this while it's plugged in? Oh yeah, so I would like to tell you guys a story. Um, true story. I, I uh, recently, this spring, acquired uh, Elvis Stern. That would be collector's quality. Um, it spent the majority of its life in one fellow's basement. It, absolutely beautiful machine. He didn't even know the backlast came off, so I was really fortunate that there was no erosion on the batteries, okay? Long story short, um, my father had come down, who's an Elvis fan, and uh, just was super excited after I had just got it home to, to play the Elvis, and it was fantastic, but I was a bit anal, and the uh, pop bumpers were not sensitive enough for me. So what I did was I lifted the play field with the power off, and I adjusted the, I was adjusting the leaf switch with a leaf switch adjustment tool to make them more sensitive. That is, um, that is not, uh, uh, it, it, it's totally conductive, right? So I had the machine off. There I am adjusting the leaf switches, which are right here, make it more po uh, sensitive. Turn on the machine, put it on. Very happy with two out of three. Two out of three ain't bad, but I want three out of three. So I thought, well, okay, I will just quickly, just very quickly, adjust this one ever so slightly. All right, well, my, with my vision, peripherally, I didn't notice that I was about to arc the coil against uh, uh, grounding it. And that's exactly what happened. And what I did was I took out the coil diode, but which is like a 15 cent part. Moreover though, I took out the transistor that drives that a uh, pop bumper um, on the board, and so I had to take a virgin, never looked at, never seen light board, and take off a transistor and replace a couple of dollar transistor and do board work on, on a machine that did not need it, all because I left the power on. So I would recommend if you've got a tool in your hand, not to have the power on, uh, because there is high current through here. Um, when you're changing bulbs, um, I, with, with something like this that have the wedges and they come off like this, I feel very comfortable having the machine on as long as I don't have tools in my hand because it's uh, simple. You know, you, you take it out, you put it in, and we typically do keep them on because we want to see what they look like, right? For instance, you know, that light there is a blue insert, okay? But I want to, that, that's a white, that's a, uh, a white uh, LED that's in there, okay? I usually color my play fields with the matching uh, color. And so if we come in just out of curiosity here, if we look at this right now on, okay, which is this one right here, okay? So this is with a white LED in it, all right? Nothing wrong with that. It looks great, okay? But I usually color match, and that's blue. So I'm going to take a blue LED and quickly just show you the difference between a clear LED and a colored LED in the insert. And the thing is, is you just got to get it in. These are stern ones. Not that that makes a difference. No, no, these are stern. So now I've got a blue in and you'll see, you see how much bluer it is? Sure. It was yeah. a, it was a lighter, it was lighter. Now it's, you see the comparison here between the two. Might have been a blue, and this was a clear because they were different. This looked bluer. Yeah, this one did look bluer originally. Clear. Yes, but uh, this one was clear and was more washed up. And now I put a, a bright uh, blue in there. Um, and so typically, when when I'm doing play fields, and you talk to the, uh, Scott who does them as well. We typically will make a choice between a soft white or a cool white for anything that's general illumination so that you can see the art, so that nothing is washed out, okay? Uh, but, but underneath, we'll typically use colors. 
um, to color, except for the color yellow, you want to use white. When I got this, it was all color matched to them. And they wash so, out. And it washed out. Yeah. So I changed them. This was all green, changed yeah. them all. You couldn't even see right. in there actually, Dad. I know, because yeah. that's the yeah. way I got the game though. Yeah. So I changed them out because of that. But uh, you know, this is tastefully uh, uh, done. Uh, great machine, I, I, I would buy it. Good, you sold know. again. I think I, I think that just about uh, wraps up our day. Uh, are there are there any more uh, questions? Are yes. Schematics. Like yeah. With manuals. Or yeah. Manuals? So, a couple of things regarding that. Every game has a schematic. Um, older games typically came with a um, operator's manual uh, and uh, and a schematic. And in the operator's manual, you'd have all uh, all your parts lists, uh, uh, playfield naming descriptions, things like that. Very handy. Uh, the schematic would contain anything from um, the wiring under the playfield uh, to uh, the to the transformer to the way that the lights are working on the playfield. So like the switch matrix and the lamp matrix, the way the lights work. Um, as well as to the layout of each of these boards and a description of the boards and the ratings for each of the parts on the boards. Um, when you're buying a used machine, um, a lot of the time the manuals and the operators uh, schematics are long gone. Uh, but with that said, IPDB has virtually every Bally and Williams uh, manual and schematic on there. It's really handy. Um, games like Gottlieb are another story. You usually have to go um, through uh, Steve's uh, pinball resource um, to uh, obtain the Gottlieb manuals. He's got the rights to those manuals and he protects them so people can't really upload them. Um, any of the new games that you buy today don't come with that because you can download it from the websites. Um, now Jack, Jersey Jack still comes with uh, manuals yeah, but uh, yeah uh, but um, but anything stern um, it's it's downloadable you can print it if you like tools. Tools and spare parts yeah so I'm, I'm really glad that you brought that up um, in terms of uh, spare parts I think it's uh, critical to have an assortment of fuses on um, on hand and a lot of games on the inside of their games actually this one too will give you a layout of not only uh, what fuses are here but what the values are for each of those uh, fuses so we can see F110 which will be on here uh, calls for a, a 4 amp uh, slow blow uh, 250 volt uh, fuse okay so what I would do is I would just take a picture of this if you don't know you know Take a picture of that, walk into B&E and say, hey man, I, I, I need an assortment of five of each of these fuses. Um, fuses blow for a reason, but sometimes, I swear to you, they blow for no reason as well. <laughs> um, but, but for the most part, if you have a fuse that's uh, uh, continually blowing or, or blowing after every few, few games, you, you have an issue. Um, whether it's a capacitor that's getting weak or a bridge rectifier or in the case of for instance Scott uh, Scott owns a whirlwind here he kept having part of his GI burning out couldn't figure it out eh? um, it turned out to simply be a very close connection at the coin door light where it says insert a dollar um, and and what that was doing it was just touching enough that sometimes the two contacts would touch and he would blow the fuse so it was very hard to troubleshoot but there are reasons for b fuses blowing but you should keep fuses on hand for sure um, fuses and uh, I uh, myself because I have uh, a few machines I, I keep uh, flipper rebuilds on hand too um, and, uh, and not all flipper rebuilds are the same so you need specific for the years um, another thing that I keep on hand that I think is the best practice is everybody should go and buy from Pinball Life um, one of the assortment of rubbers, uh, the rubber kits. You get like 130 rubbers for not too much money. Um, what is it, 39 bucks or something? 100, 100 rubbers for 30 bucks. Yeah. yeah, 100 rubbers for $30. Nitro Pinball. Uh, and uh, oh, does uh, Nitro well, sell those as well? Okay. It's 30 bucks US from Pinball Life. Yeah. Nitro is. I think it's 50, 50 five or, or 60, 60 yeah. or 60 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I would buy rubbers as well. I would also buy some um, rubber replacement uh, flipper bands. Yeah. Just um, buy the bulk tub. And 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 an assortment of lights. There's nothing wrong with um, with incandescents, uh, but uh, you know my preference is LED. I like the brighter look. I like the sharper look. I like being able to color the inserts, uh, especially on older games. It just makes them pop. 
right? Um, those would be really the things I would keep on hand. In terms of tools, everybody needs... Um, magnetic nut drivers, for sure. Yeah, sure. Imperial magnetic nut drivers. Um, thank you so much. That, uh, that could be uh, hollow, um, so that you can get around things like, uh, like, like post-screw um, holes. Uh, but I would, I would, I would do that. Um, you need uh, wire uh, clippers. Um, you want to have a, a decent soldering iron. That's one of the things. Well, okay. So based on your comfort, okay, there's some things that every pinball owner should know how to do, and that's take something apart and put a new rubber on. That's you know replace the balls. How to clean the play field. I think we've covered all that. But but depending on your comfort level and how comfortable you feel, another critical tool, in my opinion, would be a good soldering iron. Invest in a soldering iron like a Hacko, um, uh, because uh, it often coils will a, a wire will just drop off. All right, you'll be able to spot it right away. The flipper's not working right, and the wire's sitting there. Okay, um, and so I would recommend a good soldering iron as well. Um, a leaf adjustment tool, in my opinion, is a must because a lot of the games, in my opinion, may not be sensitive enough on a, on a, on a switch. So it's an inexpensive uh, product. Magnet. Um, and, uh, and it's right, right here. It's got two little wedges that you can ad uh, adjust the sensitivity of, of switches. It's fantastic. Um, isopropyl alcohol is another uh, must because uh, it's great for cleaning dirty optos. Uh, games like um, uh, the Star Trek The Next Generation were notorious for having really dirty optos at the flipper buttons and would wreck havoc on their flippers like the uh, right upper flipper and you'd be what's going on and you look and you troubleshoot and you can't find anything wrong yet it's not flipping. <laughs> Turns out it's optos, right? Is an opto? So an opto is uh, Basically, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a receiver and a transmitter uh, that transmits an invisible beam. So one lens grabs, grabs the information and it just it looks for a block. So, so when something's blocked, for instance, the optos are used in a lot of uh, uh, troughs, modern troughs, right? And, and when it's blocked, it knows there's a ball there. When it's not blocked, it knows there's a ball out, right? Um, and optos, between optos and switches, they're, they're used in everything. Right in here, if we go in here, you can see the, the lens optos between the um, drop targets on, uh, on TNA on either side. So when I got TNA a couple weeks ago, remember I said I shopped that, uh, that's a good example of a game that because of an optos issue was playing absolutely unplayable and had no idea what's wrong. Is it software or is it what? When I got it home, I hit start, and the game immediately would start going into multi-ball, dropping the targets, bringing them back up, dropping them. What's wrong? Is this an optos issue? I'm not sure. You know, troubleshooted through the menu, could not figure it out. I'm checking, I've got the plastic off, I can see the optos are working in the test, okay? What it turned out to be was um, the optos board underneath the play field had a Molex that um, ha was constantly being shaken loose. So the fix was I replaced the Molex, issue resolved. I, but in troubleshooting, I cleaned the optos, I made sure they were aligned perfectly, and then I found it under the play field. But an optos can absolutely destroy um, a game for functionality and can sometimes uh, be a little uh, uh, hard to diagnose. But um, uh, you can do that in a switch menu, uh, which, the other thing that I was going to say, I don't mean to go all over the place, but if we have this and we're trying to troubleshoot something, there's, there's menus to help you, which are uh, right here. So you've got your buttons here. You've got to exit, you've got to enter, and then um, uh, 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 a moving one, right? So if we go into here, so I'm going to go into test right now. And oops, let me just back out. I'm going to go into switch edges. I'm just going to see if things are working, right? So right now, when I hit this target, I can see it's registering, right? So I know it's working. This target too, right? This target here, right? If I was to go into here, if I can reach it, which I can't, but go do a rollover, we'll see. Um, if there were balls in the trough, we would see how many balls 
would be on this outside one here in the trough. I think it's the outside one. But you can see the switches, we're, we're seeing everything, right? Including the end of stroke on these, as well as we'll see the optos on here, right? When we, when we leave it, right? So, so what we're seeing there is the first is the uh, left flipper button and then the upper left flipper button, right? With the two optos that are down there. Uh, but that's a really handy, um, handy menu for when you're, uh, when you're troubleshooting uh, a switch. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's about it. On this game, I can see there's a light mod as well for the speakers, that's not factory. I, 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 well, you know, I, I do want to uh, thank everybody for, for coming out, and I hope that um, each and every one of you are able to take away at least one thing from here that will, will help you in determining um, making a purchase or, uh, or help you in uh, protecting a game, a new game or an old game, and give you some confidence when you are making a buying decision. I mean, pinball is not cheap. It, uh, it's an expensive uh, hobby and you want to make sure that you're comfortable when you're buying something that you're making the right decision and so I, I hope today that Dan and I have helped you with that and thank you Scott for, for chiming in especially. Um, are, are there any other questions? Soldering. On soldering Alex, did you touch on never solder with your game on? If, oh, if you touch yeah. your soldering iron to anything, you ground it. you're going to ground it out and you're going to close up every time. So always make sure it gets off on solder. Yeah, you'd never um, never want to do that. Another best practice is maybe maybe don't don't solder on your um, on your play field. Yeah, I mean, you could just uh, I could see burns or anything if you accidentally you know lay it down or your peripheral vision is out of the way and knock something. So I would keep it off of there. Um, or, that's or, put, really or put a thick piece of cardboard underneath where you're soldering so that if anything drops, it doesn't hit the play field. So another little cheat here is this. This guy here has a um, has a has a uh, light that wasn't working, and if we could get in there, normally I have a, something to pull this out, but um, we can bend. So you see how it's this light's not working very good. It's out now, right? These ones here that have the inserts, uh, the wedges, you can just bend your wires like so, and then put it back in and it will totally, totally resolve that issue. Um, I just can't get this out right now because we're all here, I'm not gonna bother, but at some point Dan's just gonna remove that. He'll do that and pop it back in. What about cleaning metal parts? Awesome, <laughs> so Autosol, glad you mentioned. Uh, this stuff uh, has been around. Um, I think well over a hundred years and a little dab will do you but this stuff is like absolute magic so what you would do you is good on spot, the you're doing the whole game what you can do <laughs> is uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, just one little one little one little spot one holy cow look at that it was in my pocket so we'll do the whole game here um, no so you would never use this much you just use a fraction of that actually, but you put that on there. And uh, um, if you look at the lack of luster on this right now, this actually could use this stuff. And we just go like this. This stuff is absolutely, absolutely like magic. We'll see what's happening here. So you can see what's happening. Do you see this, right? So yours is getting this treatment, okay? So after we've wiped it, then we just go in with a clean portion of the cloth and we wipe it again and look at this look at this look at the difference between this one and this one and it's so easy and it's really inexpensive i buy mine from amazon for 12.99 that little tube will last me six machines for sure um at least yeah that's with with uh, uh, uh that that's like with full habit trails and things like that but uh yeah it, it goes a really, yeah. really long way. Your legs start to rust, you could use it. Lots of lights. polishing. I like recommend a, getting a sonic cleaner. Yeah, uh, ultrasonic it cleaner. Take a lot of the work out of the way. You can just like, then use the polish on the last, just get a last sheet. But yeah, so if you're doing a restore, <laughs> uh, definitely uh, ultrasonic cleaner is fantastic, especially for like nuts and bolts. Um, you can even throw things like coils in there. Um, it, it makes a uh, big difference. The whole trough. Yeah, the whole trough.
Yep. Yep. Just make sure you drive real well. But you can see, I mean, look look at the difference here, eh? Maybe I should do. I'll do the other side. So we can see. Yeah. Yeah. So here, um, if we take that other. Where did I put that? Here it is. So we should do that other side there. And what's this stuff called? Auto saw. And it's uh, here. Be able to get that out. Uh, it will be able to get it a lot shinier. Would you be able to buff that out somehow? I wouldn't bother, but it it can make it look a lot better using that auto saw on it. So you can see that, right? You see that? Yeah. And then we just take it and clean it. But now, now if you look underneath here, you can see how dull this is compared to this. You see the difference? Now here, here's something that um, Dan probably doesn't realize, but this yeah, was shaking. Yeah. I'm like, why is this? So this needs a little spot weld at some point. It's very minor. It's not a deal breaker, but but he, he'll want to get that spot welded. <laughs> so anyways, big big difference, right? It doesn't take much effort. I usually clean these. I always take them off so I can get them real clean. Make sure that all the auto saws off, and uh, it makes a world of difference for for how easy and how far that stuff goes. Um, I highly recommend having that in your in your kit as well. Yeah, you can use that on your lock bars, um, on any of the chrome parts, on your legs, it, uh, on the on the side armor. It's uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I've used it on um, on any of my um, backlasts where I've got the chrome um, uh, lift. Uh, uh, I've I've used it there as well. Video. Yeah. So just want to thank everybody for coming out today, and um, I, I hope we all have taken away something from this. And thank you for your time. Well, there you have it. That session presented a lot of great information to help you get started. This really is just the tip of the iceberg when we're talking about pinball ownership, hence the 101 title of the video. Now, there are a ton of other topics I'm sure we could have covered. Um, everything from basic soldering, troubleshooting electronics issues using a multimeter, to fixing specific flipper behaviors, and so on. So maybe we'll see a 200 series session in the future that'll dig into more of these topics. Now, I do want to thank Stephen Livingston for helping out organizing this session as well as Alex and Dan again for presenting and all the folks who attended the session in person and asked questions along the way. Well that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you guys have any specific pinball questions that you think we might be able to help you with or any ideas for topics on other future pinball ownership sessions, just go ahead and leave those down in the comment section below the video. And if you like this video, go ahead give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future pinball or arcade related videos that we might publish. Thanks for watching.